dear learners my name is professor rc mishra i am working here at uttarakhand open university as director school of management studies i am here to discuss with you certain topics certain subject areas in the broader area of microeconomics today we shall be discussing nature and scope of microeconomics let me tell you this microeconomics as the name tells us deals with the smaller units of economics deals with the behavior of a consumer deals with the study of the factors of production and deals with the market mechanism so all these aspects are studied at the micro level therefore it is known as microeconomics the fact is that economics is referred to by different names for different courses of study sometimes it's called business economics sometimes it's called microeconomics and initially it was called political economy but all the same basic fundamental principles which are to be discussed at the level of an individual consumer or a group of consumers an individual producer or a group of producers or for the factors of production or for the market mechanism all these are the subject matter of microeconomics so today i shall be discussing with you the initial area that is nature and scope of microeconomics now let me explain as to what do we mean by nature when we talk about nature that means we are talking about some essential attributes of that subject like what is this subject all about what does it contain for us what is there in it for us in other words what may be the broad definition of the entire subject this is what is nature so when we talk about the nature of economics then we are confronted with a few important terms one is the wants the other one is the resources the third one is scarcity and these three terms put together give us the basic subject matter of nature and scope so nature and scope of economics tells us as to what this subject is all about as the name goes economics you must have heard about another term economizing we are told to economize or to spend less and to save some more money why because we may become happier by economizing similarly economics may provide us a situation wherein we are happier we are better placed of course economics is not a cure for unhappiness but the chances are that a person who has made a systematic study of economics may lead a better life may get a better career may save better may be an intelligent taxpayer so all these aspects come with the study of economics now what does economics study it studies the economic behavior of people and it studies the economic behavior of the economic phenomena how do people behave in economic terms that is the subject matter of economics how is the economic phenomena what is the action reaction of economic phenomena how does it act and react that is the subject matter of economics 
people have a constant desire to gain the maximum satisfaction and the fact that they want to have the maximum satisfaction they act in a rational manner and as i said in the beginning itself the fundamental issue is that of wants human wants are many and unlimited and these wants go on growing as we grow older as the information increases as the advertisement increases as the technology increases the demands the wants also go on increasing so these wants are unlimited there are a large number of wants for every person and these wants are to be satisfied with the help of resources the resources are always limited resources are not in plenty to meet each and every want that an individual or a society has so resources are limited not only that the resources are limited but the resources have alternative uses also these resources can be put to different uses for example electricity is a resource now electricity can be used for industrial purposes electricity can be used for running the trains electricity can be used for agricultural purposes and electricity can be used for consumption purposes by the households so these are the various uses of electricity which is a resource similarly each and every resource has got alternative uses now these were the alternative uses of electricity as i explained similarly each resource has got alternative uses now look at the situation on one hand you have wants wants are many and unlimited and on the other you have the resources which are limited and not only that these resources are limited but these resources have got the alternative uses also here comes the most important aspect which gives rise to economics and that is choice making naturally because you on one hand we have unlimited wants and on the other we have limited resources with alternative uh, uses so the choices have to be made these choices decide the economic behavior whatever is more urgent that requirement is fulfilled first whatever is not so urgent it is given the second priority and whatever is least urgent or least important is given the last priority so the process goes on this process of choice making continuously goes on now if you look at the nature of human wants these human wants are because everybody wants to raise the standard of living therefore wants go on increasing similarly there is a tendency to accumulate beyond the present need there again the wants increase then knowledge inventions advertisements they add to information of the consumer and as a result his or her wants increase then satisfying one want may lead to many other wants now i give you a simple example if you buy a car the moment you buy a car some additional wants demands will requirements will also be created like if the car has been purchased the insurance shall be required petrol shall be required driver shall be required repairs will be required spare parts will be required garage will be required so many things so the moment uh, you create a want you put a want further so many other subsidiary requirements also come up so these days mobile is very common but with the purchase of a mobile the apps also come into the play similarly the repairing job that also takes place the data it has to be renewed every cycle you 
buy the data pack for one cycle and the moment the cycle is over before that only you have to get it recharged for the next cycle. So one want gives rise to many wants. And these wants are unending and continue till the lifetime. Nobody can say that these wants are finished. These wants never finish. This is a continuous process. They go on and on and on. One more important thing about wants which I wish to tell you is that satisfaction of each want does not give the same, uh, same amount of happiness. You satisfy one want, but it may not give you same happiness. The other wants may give you some more happiness. So between wants also, there is a difference. Some wants give you more satisfaction and some wants give you lesser satisfaction. So this uh, classification of wants in terms of satisfaction also makes us, uh, forces us to make choices. We need to make choices. Now the problem of choice is getting complicated. Number one, choice has to be made because the resources are limited, because the resources have alternative uses. Similarly, choices have to be made because every demand, every want does not lead to same amount of satisfaction. The degree of satisfaction varies from one demand to another. Now let us discuss a little about the resources also. What are the resources? There are different types of resources. One group may be that of natural resources like land, space, water, minerals, forest, climate. These are the natural resources. These are called capital. Then there are some man-made resources like machinery, equipment, tools, technology, patents, building. These are the man-made resources. So natural resources and man-made resources put together, these are known as capital. Now there is one more type of capital. People save from out of their earnings. These savings lead to capital formation. And with the creation of capital, that is the accumulated savings, some assets are purchased. So this is also a form of capital. But if the money is invested in the shares and bonds, these shares and bonds are the financial capital and these are not meant for production. So with the capital formation, if the assets are purchased, which, are, which help in production of other items, then that is also considered as capital, money capital. So there are natural resources, there are man-made resources, and there is money capital. All this put together is known as capital. Capital is one important resource. Second is human resources, manpower, talent, skills, innovative ability. These are called labor. In economics, there is one term for all these and that is labor. Then the fourth resource is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship refers to organizational ability, taking the lead, organizing the business and the capacity to take the risk. This is considered to be entrepreneurship. So, Entrepreneurship is again a resource. Now, till now we have known what are the resources. One is capital. Second one is labor. Third one is entrepreneurship. These are the basic resources which have economic value. But there are some other resources which are economically valuable like time and information. Time and information are also the resources. Time is a very important resource. Information is a very important resource. This is the age of information. We cannot afford to ignore information. So these are the resources. Resources, as I said earlier, they have alternative uses. Not one, but there are many uses. So every individual 
every society every government has to decide and to make the priorities for the use of resources more important wants more important requirements are to be fulfilled first and less important requirements are to be pushed to the second level and they are satisfied later now scarcity is a relative term if there is no demand there is no scarcity and if there is demand there is a scarcity so scarcity is a relative term naturally therefore once again we come to the central idea that is the choice making now in such a situation choice has to be made choice has to be made regarding what where to involve the capital for what purpose the capital is to be employed for what purpose the labor is to be employed in which direction the entrepreneurship has to work these are the basic questions because there is a scarcity so these questions have to be taken care of now what does the economics do it provides thorough understanding of an issue one gets to know as to what is an issue you get to know the nature of that issue then logic and reasoning to, to classify an economic phenomena as to what kind of an economic phenomena it is you get the logic you get the analysis to understand that economic phenomena it provides tools and techniques of analysis it provides analytical framework to analyze the economic phenomena it provides predictions of the possible result of an action and all this is aimed at satisfaction of people's wants satisfaction of households wants satisfaction of society's wants and satisfaction of national wants now next important aspect which i want to discuss with you because by understanding these separate aspects you will be able to get a good idea as to what microeconomics is all about or what is the nature of microeconomics goals what are the goals in economics the first the, these goals are classified as intermediate goals final goal goal of efficiency goal beyond efficiency intermediate goal intermediate goal is not a goal in itself rather it is there for some other goal which is the final purpose uh, let let me explain it with the help of an example supposing there is inflation in the economy and the central bank wants to curb the money supply so money supply curbing the money supply is the final goal and as an intermediate goal crr may be increased similarly repo rate crr <coughs> these are the different tools these are the intermediate goals these are the intermediate actions these intermediate actions will lead to the achievement of the final goal which is an end in itself which is desired which is the very purpose next one is goal of efficiency goal of efficiency tells us that the individual or a household or a firm or a national has to, or a nation has to take the maximum output with the help of minimum of inputs so as the inputs go on increasing the cost of production also increases so with the help of minimum inputs the maximum output is to be obtained this is the goal of efficiency and there there is a goal which is beyond efficiency these inputs and outputs are measurable in terms of money but there are many such things which cannot be measured in terms of money for example health of people environment of the society environment in which we live economic value may directly not be assigned to the the health care to the environmental concerns to the education system to cleanliness but these are the goals beyond efficiency 
and every society needs to care needs to take care of these goals which are beyond efficiency so these are the different goals goals in economics the next is types of output what kind of output we get in in this process the first one is consumer goods and services those goods and those services which are required by consumers are made available these this is an output then services like education health communication these are intangible in nature but these are also demanded by people the fact that people demand it this also has to be made available capital goods capital goods are directly not demanded by the consumers but these capital goods are demanded by the firms which produce goods for the consumers in order to produce the goods these capital goods are required and the fact that these capital goods are required to manufacture the consumer goods these are also uh, this is also a type of demand and this is a type of demand which is made by the firms the manufacturers there are some intermediate goods these intermediate goods are cement fertilizers and raw materials meaning thereby these are demanded for some other purpose this is not demanded directly by the consumers but this is being demanded because something will be created which shall be demanded by the consumers so these are the types of output consumer goods and services as i said services are intangible in nature like you cannot touch it you cannot feel it it doesn't have a physical form but the services are very important then you have services like education health communication all these are intangible in nature there are capital goods and there are intermediate goods like the raw material or like the uh, any any such item cement fertilizer and all these things now so at this point till now we have discussed wants we have discussed the resources we have discussed the requirement of resources for the fulfillment of wants we have discussed that these resources are limited wants are unlimited and these resources are capable of being put to alternative uses therefore the choices have to be made similarly we learnt about wants also that satisfaction of each want does not lead to same amount of satisfaction the degree of satisfaction varies it does not remain the same there again choices are necessitated then we learnt as to what are the resources then what are the goals in economics what is the output and what does economics do so now what all is included in economics if i may try to put it this way so it is study the economic behavior of individuals and economic phenomena secondly people tend to maximize their gains against many wants and limited resources everybody wants to maximize the gain maximize the satisfaction maximize the happiness and in which scenario where there are many wants and where there are limited resources with alternative uses but the desire is to maximize the gain maximize the satisfaction this particular maximization principle gives rise to another factor also and that is rationality of a consumer because a consumer wants to maximize the satisfaction it is rather natural that the behavior of the consumer will be rational the consumer will behave in a rational manner unless the consumer behaves in a rational manner maximization of satisfaction is not possible then the process mentioned in this uh, entire paradigm leads to scarcity and eventually we come to choice making and economics provides tools and techniques to analyze and predict so with all this information that i gave to you if i am to sum up as to what is economics 
if i am to define as to what all should be included in economics I mean, when i say nature of economics that means what all should economics include and this is known as definition so a kind of definition not a definition given by some economist not a definition given by some scholars but it's a definition which you can create which i can create which anybody can create by knowing all these components which i have discussed with you just now so i would put it this way economics studies the economic behavior of people it studies and justifies the issue of scarcity and choice making provides understanding of economic phenomena coupled with economic behavior of people firms and nations provides tools and techniques of economic analysis as well as social and environmental impacts it helps in providing techniques for predicting the consequences of economic decisions so now just have a look at what i said just now it encompasses everything first thing economic behavior of people and economic behavior of economic phenomena then it justifies scarcity and choice making then it provides understanding of this economic phenomena and economic behavior thorough understanding then it provides tools and techniques to analyze to study the economic aspects economic impacts environmental impacts these are also to be studied and ultimately it gives us techniques it gives us tools to predict the result of some possible action so this is what the economics is now briefly uh, by now i'm sure uh, I, i if if i put it this way that economics can be summed up in three words one wants two resources with alternative uses limited resources with alternative uses and third choice making so in this process of choice making the economics is born the economics comes into being in this process of choice making so we'll continue with that in the next lecture thank you